In a chemical reaction, the atoms of the reactants are rearranged to form new compounds that we call products. Now here again is the combustion reaction of methane. One methane molecule reacts with two oxygen molecules to form CO2 and two water molecules. One way to think about this reaction is the following. Think of the molecule as being compounds made of Lego blocks. I can then take these compounds and take them apart. I retrieve the individual building blocks. And from these building blocks, I can make new compounds. So effectively, what I've done here is to write a Lego equation, where the reactants, the Lego reactants on the left, are converted into products on the right. Now note that I have not taken out or added any new Lego blocks. The number of Lego blocks is conserved. And the same is true in a chemical reaction. The number of atoms is conserved. I don't add or take out any atom. That also means that I have the same number of atoms on the left as on the right, which means the total mass on the left and the right must be the same. There is so-called mass conservation, conservation of mass. In fact, conservation of mass is a very important law in uh, chemical reactivity. This law only is valid for balanced equations, which means that in order to give these equations quantitative meaning, we have to balance chemical reactions and chemical equations. So how do we balance a chemical equation? Well, this is a general flow of how we do it. The first thing is to identify what is taking place, what reaction is taking place. What are the reactants and what are the products and what are the physical states? Then we write the unbalanced equation. We put the reactants to the left and the products to the right. Then we try to balance the equation. And we typically start with the most complicated molecule or the most exotic atom. Let's look at an example. In this reaction, ammonium dichromate is ignited to form nitrogen gas, water vapor, and chromium-3 oxide. What is the balance equation for this reaction? Well, first things first. Let's try to identify the reactants and the products. There's only one reactant in this case, and that is, that is ammonium dichromate. Ammonium dichromate is an ionic compound. It contains two cations of ammonium and one anion, the dichromate anion. It is also in the solid state, indicated by this S. On the product side, we find nitrogen gas, water vapor, which is a gas, and chromium-3 oxide, which is a solid. The next step is to write the unbalanced equation. That's not difficult. We just put the reactants to the left and the products to the right. The last step is to actually balance the equation. And we would like to start with the most complicated molecule or the most exotic element. Let's, in this case, start with ammonium dichromate with the first element in ammonium dichromate, which is the nitrogen atom. I count a total of two on the left. I also count two on the right, which means that nitrogen is already balanced. Now, what element am I looking at next? I could pick hydrogen or oxygen or chromium. I pick chromium because I want to keep the oxygen and hydrogen for last. And that's a general rule. The hydrogens and the oxygens should be kept for last because it's easier to balance an equation with these elements than with the more exotic elements. So let's look at chromium first. I count two chromium atoms on the left. I also count two on the right. So chromium and nitrogen are both balanced already. What about the oxygen and the hydrogen? Well, I count seven oxygens on the reactant side. I count a total of eight hydrogen atoms. Let's go to the right and see how many we find there. I find three oxygen atoms in chromium oxide. But I don't find the number of oxygen atoms that I really need because the water molecule doesn't give me enough oxygen atoms to add up to seven. Also, I don't see eight hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side, which means this equation is not balanced. I need more hydrogens and more oxygens. I can do that by multiplying the number of water molecules by four, four water molecules in total. That gives me four oxygen atoms from the water plus the three from the chromium-3 oxide, which adds up to seven. At the same time, I'm introducing four times two, which is eight hydrogen atoms. That means 
eight hydrogen atoms on the right corresponds to eight hydrogen atoms on the left. So nitrogen and chromium, which are already balanced, are now supplemented with oxygen and hydrogen, which are also balanced. That means this equation is balanced. By putting a four in front of the water molecule, we've balanced this reaction. 